Like me, when I first started, you probably want to know what the biggest problems you're going to run into going solar on your RV. And I can tell you, I've got five doozies for you. But the last one, that one's the one that's going to really catch you off guard. I wasn't expecting it at all. So let's get started. The, the first one is going to be the weight. When you're looking at weight, it is really important to consider some of the things that you're going to need to take care of. So for example, let's think about this. I have 604 amp hours of batteries in my RV. Um, the three EG4 batteries that I have weigh about 100 pounds a piece and the DIY battery, which is another 304 amp hours, weighs about 200 pounds. So together, that's 500 pounds of batteries. Not to mention, there's 10 solar panels on the roof. And even if you take it conservatively and say there are about 40 pounds a piece, that's another 400 pounds. So together, my solar system weighs about 1,000 pounds. Now that means that if I change nothing, and I just put the solar system in the RV, and I don't actually change anything in the RV around or move it around from the factory, then that means that I have a net loss of a thousand pounds of weight. Now, there are a few things that you can do about it. Uh, one of those things is you can travel, you can take the air conditioning units off the roof because you're going to have to deal with that and we'll talk about that later but if you take the air conditioners off the off those roof they're very inefficient they're not going to do you any good uh, and you're going to have to switch to mini splits anyway because mini splits and air conditioning is number two on the list you those inefficient units that you have that that they come with you're not going to be able to deal with them so you take the air conditioners off you solve the problem of air conditioning and it it is literally almost a five to one savings. Now, they run at about three times the wattage, but they also run less because they're inverters. Make sure you get the inverter heat pumps because when you solve the air conditioning, you're also gonna to wanna to solve the heating issue. Heat, you can use the propane that comes with your RV, and it's a good solution. It does work and it completely gets you away from using electric. But the idea for me for solar isn't just to have alternative solutions, it's to have renewable solutions. I don't have to go out and buy propane all the time. I don't have to go out and buy gas all the time for a generator. I don't have to pay for electricity when I get plugged in. I can go out and, and boondock and I don't have to worry about it. So you, you can deal with it with the propane, but my suggestion is, is that you deal with the weight first by eliminating the air conditioners, the air conditioning and the heating element you deal with by throwing those out, patch the holes up, put panels up there, put more panels. And if you have more panels, you can deal with it. Now, the savings on the air conditioners is pretty significant. Uh, so you're, you're looking at, and the heat pumps work fantastic as long as you get inverter uh, versions. So that is the, the first two items on the list. So the third item on the list is you're always on trickle. Now, the always-on trickle is a really hard one to deal with because what this is referring to, and let me kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about, when your system is on, you're using power for simple things. If you have your laptop plugged in, you have your TV plugged in, you have uh, you know, the coffee pot sitting there with just a, the time on it, the microwave is sitting there with the time on it, and all of this trickle power can really add up. In my case, the trickle power or the always on power or the idle power or whatever you want to call it, just from you, from, from, from devices pulling from your system adds up to about 250 watts. It's very much, in my case, it's very much like a house, uh, but it doesn't have to be that bad. A lot of people's is a lot better, but in my case, it is 250 watts. And 250 watts is 250 amp hours an hour at four for every four hours that's one there's six of those in a day so that's six kilowatts a day in just trickle power so that's something that really you're going to have to deal with and you need to cut back on those devices find ways to shut things down turn off items or make sure that what you have up there is a lot of solar panels and in my case i have 3700 watts so I dealt with it that way. I dealt with it with more solar panels. I dealt with it with more battery space, 31 kilowatts of battery space, and 
3,700 watts of solar panels up there. And then as you've seen in many of my other videos, my solar shed. So the solar shed's another 3,000 watts of panels, but those 3,000 watts of panels don't quite generate that because they're mount, some of them are mounted vertical in order to allow me to keep it here. Now, all of that said, that covers the first three items on the list. Now we can talk about the two really big ones. The next one is hot water. Hot water is probably one of the hardest to deal with. And in my case, hot water runs between 1.5 and three kilowatt hours of three kilowatt hours of power a day. It depends enormously on showers, how many of you there are, um, how much you use the hot water for rinsing things out, for doing dishes, things like that. If you're very conservative, you can bring that down. If you don't run it always on like I do, now that's always on. Keep in mind, I do not use any propane for it. My hot water heater is on 24 seven. And um, so that kind of gives you an idea of how much power it is. Now you can use it where you just turn it on. You can turn the temperature down. You can use propane. There's a lot of options for hot water. And propane one is actually a really good one in this case although it kind of defeats the purpose of having solar. Uh, but if you don't have the extra power, then you don't have the ability to do it. You can use propane, especially if you're going boondocking or something. It's a fantastic solution. For the, non, for the permanent location type scenarios, I use the solar shed. The solar shed brings in between five and seven kilowatt hours a day. And those, that power takes care of my idle consumption, most of it at least. And it also takes it takes care of my hot water heater. During the winter, I usually have to turn those down or turn them off, or at least be selective about my hot water heater. What I'll do is I'll know if we're taking if we're going to take a shower and do the dishes in the evening. I'll turn it on late in the afternoon, let it get hot. We'll do those things, and then I'll shut it off, and it'll remain off for the next you know 20, 22 hours of the day. So that's the way you can do it. The um, so basically you're dealing with those four big items, the weight, you gotta worry about how you're, gonna, how you're gonna take care of the weight situation. Then the next one you wanna look at is the always on, or the air conditioner and the heating section, and then the always on trickle power and the hot water heater. And then the last one, which is the doozy, and I would have never suspected it. I have an all-in-one 6000 XP, and when the, no matter how much power you have up there, the more power you pull in up there, the more power it uses to convert it to battery. And when it gets converted from battery, it gets converted back to AC, the more it uses there. So the trick to some of this is to use as much as possible during the day when you have it and there's zero, there's as little as cost as possible. There's never no cost. So for example, you take DC power, you convert it to AC, and you can run your air conditioner during the day. That costs less than taking that DC power, taking it, putting it into your battery where there's some loss, then taking it out of your battery where there's more loss and converting it to AC where there's more loss and then using it. So what do you wanna do is you wanna use as much of it as possible during the day, but you still need to be able to use it during the night. So these are the five things and that last one is really important and I'm talking about an all-in-one, so please keep in mind, if you have separate units, you're gonna have a cost for each one of them. The inverter cost to just run idle with nothing, nothing there. You're gonna have the charge controller, when it's charging, how much does it take to actually do the conversion and put it in there. You're gonna have different devices that are, that are different uh, efficiency levels, and you're gonna to need, to need to take all of those into account. That's my five. I hope those help. Make sure you join us on Sunday for our new live um, what are they calling it? Live stream. And also sign up for the email list below so that you always get the extra content that I might be posting for some items. Sometimes I have parts list, I have a checklist, I have, you know, images and diagrams and all that kind of stuff. Those will always go out in the email list from down below. But if you're not signed up, you don't get them. Anyway, thanks to all of my subscribers. This last month has been fantastic. And I will see you on the next video.